Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline for Pixie Dust PhD. I am filming this on June 12th, 2021, so the channel is now a little bit over 16 months old. In this monthly creator update, we will talk about recent Disney Vacation Club news regarding the Grand Floridian, Boo Bash, and my upcoming trip plans. Of course, we will also cover analytics for month 16 as well as lifetime of the channel. If you're interested in getting to know me a little bit better in an unscripted manner and or looking at my analytics, please stay tuned. First, for those of you who are new to the channel, hey, I'm Jacqueline. On Pixie Dust PhD, we mostly talk about Disney Vacation Club and Walt Disney World. Once a month, I do these monthly creator updates in order to talk about sort of whatever I want and also give you a sneak peek into the life of a small YouTuber in terms of analytics. Thanks to everyone who did leave a like on the channel, and if you are new, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. You can also ring the bell icon to receive notifications whenever I post new videos. Moving into our first topic, which is Disney Vacation Club news regarding the Grand Floridian. Recently, it was announced that the Grand Floridian will take Building 9, which is the big pine key building, and switch that into about 200 DVC studios. Personally, I think this is really exciting. Adding 200 studios to the Grand Floridian will be a huge upgrade. Inventory of the Grand Floridian, for DVC at least, is currently extremely limited, so this added inventory will be massive. Also, the square footage of the general Grand Floridian hotel rooms is bigger than those general DVC studios at the Grand Floridian, so it would be interesting to see how these end up being laid out. Building 9 of the Grand Floridian Resort is near Seven Seas Lagoon and is right by the Courtyard Pool, so it's also a really great location. It is going to be closer to a lot of central amenities such as the lobby and dining options compared to the current DVC building. It is expected that these new studios will open around summer 2022. And since they will be an add-on to the current Grand Floridian Villas, I would expect that the expiration will be the same at 2064. Price is another total different consideration. Before this was announced, the Grand Floridian current villas were sold out and those were selling directly through Disney for $245 per point. I think it'll be really interesting to see what this addition ends up selling for directly through Disney. I haven't covered this on the channel yet because I do still have some questions, particularly with regards to price. Once all of those details are released, you can expect a news update from me. But regardless, I think this is awesome and certainly as a person who owns a contract with a home resort that is not the Grand Floridian, adding 200 studios to the Grand Flow makes it much more feasible for me to end up being able to stay there on the wait list, which at least for me is super exciting. And for what it's worth from some back of the envelope math, I believe this will end up adding about 1.5 million points to the resort. Next, as most of you probably know, Disney Vacation Club did raise their direct point minimum to access those full membership benefits to 150 points. I covered this previously in a video on the channel. Obviously, I am not super stoked about this. I'm not particularly surprised either, though, I guess. Definitely let me know how you feel in the comments down below. For me, I wouldn't rule out buying direct forever just because I am very interested in that new DVC tower over at Disneyland. Depending on what those point minimums look like, I could probably buy directly there, maybe just 150 points or whatever it ends up being just at Disneyland. But if that ends up being lesser, say 75 or 100 points, it's feasible to me that in the future I may end up repurchasing a Bay Lake Tower home resort contract directly through Disney and then selling off my resale contract. Generally speaking, I still feel that the direct membership benefits are not that great and probably not worth it, but I'm not saying I'm ruling out direct membership for me forever. And I hope that's clear, similar to you, depending on your financial situation. I generally feel that buying direct is probably not worth it, but if you're going to end up amassing 150 points or more regardless, maybe it's something to consider. It's certainly something I'm thinking about sort of in the long term, definitely not in the near term. Next, finally, we had Boobash dates and details announced this last month. There are a variety of dates for the Boobash after party from August through October, ranging from $129 to I think about $200 or so. It definitely is an expensive ticket, but when you compare it to past after hours events, it's, it's pretty much what you would think it would be. There is a $10 discount for annual pass holders and direct DVC members, but it's only $10. And that discount does not apply to all dates. Assuming my partner and I end up going on our planned fall 2021 trip, there is a very high chance we end up going to Boobash. I will probably also end up dyeing my hair a dark strawberry blonde slash orange color, so if you have any costume ideas, let me know in the comments down below. Things I'm currently considering include Ellie and Carl from Up, Ron and Kim from Kim Possible, Anita and Roger from 101 Dalmatians, Max and Roxanne from The Goofy Movie slash just Max Goof and Roxanne, and then Anna and Kristoff from Frozen. Some of these it would be easier to do fall on costumes, some of them might end up being Disney bounce. For example, I am not trying to wear full on winter gear like Anna and Kristoff in September in Florida in Walt Disney World. 
generally speaking, there seems to be a dearth of those sort of strawberry blonde slash orange hair colored characters in the Disney lore. So if you think of anything, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And talking about Boobash clearly leads in nicely to our planned fall 2021 Walt Disney World trip. At this point in time, I think it's probably like an 85% or 90% chance that we are indeed going to go on this planned trip and not push it back. My partner and I are both fully vaccinated, so it's not really a worry about if we personally would end up dying from contracting COVID-19. A lot of the considerations are more about the fact that there are so many children under 12 who literally have not had the chance to get vaccinated going to Walt Disney World. That being said, me not going or going is probably not going to influence how many families with children under 12 are going to Walt Disney World, so... I don't know, it kind of feels like that's not really my responsibility or even Disney's if we're being honest. Another factor is just my comfort level with sort of going back into an open up world. Very recently we have been doing sort of more things now that we are fully vaccinated. For example, we recently went to an NWSL game. Our local team is the Washington Spirit. The first 10 minutes or so of me being in my seat were actually very challenging for me anxiety wise. I do have a diagnosed anxiety disorder and I don't take a daily med for it. I sort of just have meds for if certain times end up being very bad for me. It was a very heightened, stressful time for me for the first 10 or 15 minutes. I think after that, I sort of got over it. And I'm trying more and more every day to do things without my mask, outside. We've not yet indoor dined, but I am working up to that. So some of this certainly is my personal comfort level. The last aspect of this is, is going on a Walt Disney World trip right now, quote unquote, worth it? By the time we end up going in September, I expect Disney World to be very close to full capacity, if not already at full capacity, and operating pretty close to normally. Certainly if I was them by my 50th anniversary in October, I would definitely want to be at 100% capacity and operating as much as possibly feasible. We're already seeing the lifting of the mask mandate for the most part, except basically transportation starting June 15th. I would bet personally that nighttime shows will be back by then at least some part of them maybe just the fireworks maybe not the full thing but honestly if you're doing fireworks why not do the full thing i think dining will become a lot less limited in the coming months the only real question for me is character meet and greets seemingly and reasonably to me i think character meet and greets may be the last thing to come back you'd be asking your characters to be interacting with folks constantly throughout the day many of those folks would include children under 12 who have not had the chance to be vaccinated that is a high risk exposure activity in my mind. And so it would make sense for them to hold that off. But accordingly, along with character meet and greets, that would also hold off the sort of normal character dining that I prefer. Character meet and greets and character dining are kind of a big deal to me. Honestly, in past trips, we've probably spent up to a third of our time doing character meet and greets. So would going to Walt Disney World in September of 2021 with presumably full or very close to full crowds, but possibly without fast pass and without character meet and greets be worth it? Or instead, would it be more worth it to push our trip to February 2022 or so and hope that those things are back by then? Honestly, I'm not too sure. I feel like because we have put so much planning in this and my partner and I just haven't been on a real vacation in a couple of years, we probably will end up going. But we aren't pressuring ourselves to make that decision until mid to late July. Then, of course, after that decision is when we would end up buying Boobash tickets, assuming that the night we are interested in is not sold out by then. All in all, I definitely do think we will probably end up going in September 2021. I am still wavering, though, if we're being honest. Most of that is not due to health reasons, per se, but more about sort of the worth of the full cost of a Walt Disney World trip, which is extremely expensive. It's thousands of dollars. Even with Disney Vacation Club covering our accommodations, it's still going to be thousands of dollars in flights down there, transportation around there. We're probably getting a rental car, ticket costs, food costs, etc. We do have a little bit of time to decide, thankfully, and I am definitely planning on taking full advantage of that time. I know a lot of folks these days are fully comfortable with doing full-on vacations, and I support that. I'm not here to critique that. Just for me personally, I'm not really there yet. I'm not totally sure. Let's move on to the last month's analytics. We will be specifically talking about month 16. I've pulled these analytics from May 11th through June 10th. For the most part, most of these statistics had a moderate bump from last month, which I will absolutely take and I think are worth celebrating, even though they aren't huge gains. For example, the number of monthly views went up to 4,484 over a little under 4,200. So not a huge gain, but definitely still an improvement. And I am here for that. These views came from over 2,600 unique viewers, which is up from over 2,500 unique viewers last month. 
And excitingly, over 300 of these were returning viewers. Last month, this was under 250 returning viewers. So that is a great improvement in that metric. Watch hours this month increased by about 10 hours up to just under 470 hours for the month. View duration did decrease. We are now down to six minutes and 16 seconds as opposed to over six and a half minutes last month. Last month though was one of the highest months I've ever had. So I'm not surprised to see this dip. Interestingly though, the percent view duration actually did increase even though the view duration overall decreased. We are now up to 43 and a half percent. I still would love to see this over 50% in my wildest dreams at something like 60 to 75%. I don't know if that's realistic, but at least we're making small, tiny gains month to month. There was a small increase in impressions this month up from about 64,000 to a little under 69,000. And we're making small gains in our impressions from YouTube up from about 18% to just over 19% this month. I still would love to see this higher up near that 25 to 30% mark that we were at months 11 through 14, but you know what? I'll take it. Watch time from those not subscribed actually improved this month. We are down from almost 79% to just about 74%. Again, I would love to see this decrease. I would love to see more of my viewers convert into subscribers, but as always, I don't have control over this, so it is what it is. And this month we got 45 new subscribers, which is down from last month. But if you recall, last month was my all time high for one month, so I'm not surprised to see this decrease. 45 subscribers in one month is still about one and a half a day, which I consider a total success. This month, my top videos by watch hour, again, were dominated by that photo pass slash magic shot slash memory maker at Walt Disney World video. That video is killing it. I guess the algorithm has picked it up and I'm not complaining. I just remain shocked that that is the one that people are watching. Honestly, I think my DVC content is far more valuable than that content, but maybe a lot less people are interested in DVC. I was very happy to see my Disney Vacation Club resale process, what I wish I had known video in the top five of this month. That video was published June 2nd, so really overall not that long ago, and it seems like a lot of folks are engaged with that content. That's a video I have been thinking about and or planning for months on end, but I was honestly super nervous to publish it because I thought I would get really trolled in it being too negative or too critical or something like that. Overall, the reception to that video has been really great and positive, and I think people seem generally thankful to get the heads up and the warning, and I'm, I'm so glad for that, and thank you so much. Moving away from YouTube and onto other social media, on Twitter this month, I have 713 followers, and I am following 803 accounts, and on Instagram, I have 218 followers, and I am following 308 accounts. Most of you know that I'm moving in July. The move has really sort of taken over my life in terms of packing things, going through my clothes to keep versus donate, meal prepping, a lot of freezer meals so we don't have to think about that during the move. So I have been a lot less active on social media this month overall, not just Instagram, also Twitter. Considering all that, the fact that I have any gains on social media this month, I think is a huge success. Moving into lifetime analytics for the channel, we're now at over 27,000 views total. So we did break that 25,000 view mark. I'm very hopeful we'll end up breaking 30,000 by next month, but we will have to wait and see. And similarly for watch hours, we're at over 2,800 watch hours, meaning we broke 2,500 in the last month. Again, I'm very hopeful we break 3,000 watch hours in the next month, but who knows? And we'll just have to wait and see. Lifetime view duration went up two seconds this month, even though the monthly view duration dropped. We are now at six minutes and six seconds, as opposed to last month, the lifetime was at six minutes and four seconds. As always, I would like to see this increase as basically all of my videos are longer than six minutes, but you know, some folks will find my content engaging, others will not. That's really not a big deal for me to worry about, honestly. And accordingly with view duration, the percent viewed also increased a tiny bit. We are now up to 42.3% view duration. Lifetime impressions always increases every month, now we are at over 383,000 impressions lifetime for the channel. I think it's very reasonable to think we will break 400,000 impressions by next month, which kind of blows my mind. My impressions from YouTube continues to go down a little bit. We're at 22% lifetime for the channel. My lifetime high was just under 25%. Again, I would love to see that metric at 25 to 30%, but it is what it is. And the lifetime watch time from those not subscribed did increase a little bit this month. In this case, increase is bad. You actually want to see this go down. We're now at 71.4% last month lifetime. It was at 70.9%. We're basically hovering around the 71 to 72% area. It's not great. It's not the worst. I still would love to see this go down, but converting viewers to subscribers is honestly the biggest hurdle on YouTube. So I am not surprised. Overall, I think we had a pretty good month 16. Most of the metrics did increase just a little bit, but I will absolutely take that. 
For month 16, the average view duration and the number of subscribers dropped, but the month 15 numbers for those were really quite extraordinary, so I'm not surprised to see those go down in comparison. But overall, most of the metrics did really well, even though we only had small gains, they are gains, and I think that's worth celebrating. And like I said earlier, many of you know that I am moving in July of 2021, so we will not have a July 2021 monthly creator update. I will present the month 17 statistics along with the month 18 statistics in August of 2021. But even though we don't have an update, I have been working really hard to get ahead on the upload schedule to make sure that there is no interruption in the channel. There are a lot of topics to look forward to, including next week we will have our DVC break-even conversation. I have been putting this off for a long time and it is finally coming in June of 2021 as promised. Then we'll talk about our Animal Kingdom must-dos, and I'm definitely interested to hear what your Animal Kingdom must-dos are in that park to sort of shake me out of my routine. We will highlight confirmed Disney Vacation Club reservations as opposed to the standard rental process, and we will talk about drinking in Disney, specifically alcoholic drinks. Then we'll do a head-to-head -head matchup of the Beach Club versus the Boardwalk for a Disney Vacation Club stay or contract ownership. Moving along, we will talk about our Hollywood Studios must-dos. All of those videos are filmed and uploaded. I need to correct the captions and edit the description, add cards and end screens, etc. But for the most part, those are ready to go. Then in mid to late July, my partner and I will need to make our go or no go decision for our September 2021 trip to Walt Disney World. So much changes with Walt Disney World procedures with little to no notice. For example, the mask mandate being lifted had, I think, four days notice, basically. So by mid to late July, for all I know, everything will be normal. Maybe the dining plan will be back. Maybe character dining will be back, etc. My partner and I are waiting basically until the last minute to make that decision. And we will film that and then upload that to the channel. So that specific topic of our go or no go decision is not yet filmed, edited, or uploaded. That's going to be a pretty close to real time decision. Then after that, I have filmed, edited, and uploaded, though further downstream processes need to happen, including the description, the captions, etc. But we will be talking about my process buying Disney tickets through a third-party company, as well as making park reservations. We'll talk about my go-to and sort of not go-to shoes to take to Disney World. And then we will discuss my Disney Vacation Club ownership-related fears and anxieties. That will get us through mid-August, so hopefully that will get us fully through my move and my unpacking, and I can settle down and then start to film and edit new content. Things that have yet to be filmed, edited, and uploaded include I have bought two new pairs of Minnie Mouse ears from small shops on Etsy that I'm really excited to share with you. Then, of course, we have both of our Epcot and Magic Kingdom must-do lists. I also want to do a head-to-head -head comparison of Saratoga Springs to Old Key West, as that is a question I often get. Also, I want to talk about room requests for Walt Disney World, and if I end up buying a subscription to Touring Plans, which I have not previously done, but I am highly considering this year, particularly because it seems like we might end up also going to Disneyland in early 2022, so I could sort of bundle the Walt Disney World and the Disneyland Touring Plans subscription. But anyway, I want to talk about room requests in general, and then also using the Touring Plans room request requester. The latter half of that will obviously depend on if I end up buying a subscription to Touring Plans or not. Then by the time those videos are up, if we end up going on our September 2021 trip to Walt Disney World, we will be in Disney World. So then the content soon to come after that will be sort of trip vlogs, maybe not in the standard vlog sense. It'll probably be film and then I may record sort of voiceover at home just because I don't have a proper vlogging camera with an external mic and I don't want to force you guys to sit through the awful audio from this camera. But anyway, I think there will be a lot of content to share from my 2021 trip if we do end up going, so that's sort of what I'm planning for now. If we end up pushing that trip back, then who knows what the next several months of content will end up being. As always, if you have suggestions for content that you would like to see, please leave a comment down below. I know I don't always film them right away. Frankly, I never film them right away, but your ideas always leave a thought in my head and I do think about them for a long time and then hopefully end up publishing them several months later. I am still thinking about the Disney Disability Access Plan. It's just going to take a little bit longer to put up on the channel because it is something I have to research pretty heavily. And I've gotten a lot of emails asking me why I only cover Walt Disney World and not necessarily the other DVC properties. The honest answer is that it is selfish. I go to the Walt Disney World properties and not the other ones. So I am investigating the things that I am most interested in. 
In good news for you that are interested in that though, when I'm doing list type videos over at the DVC shop YouTube channel, they are very interested in all the DVC resorts, including Hilton Head, Avalani, Vero Beach, and the Grand Californian, so those are included over there. For example, on this channel we have talked about DVC inventory and room sizes, but I have limited that to Walt Disney World. Over on the DVC shop channel, that is expanded to include Aulani, Hilton Head, Vero Beach, and the Grand Californian. So if that is content you are interested in, please go check out my work over on the DVC shop channel. That is essentially it for month 16, June of 2021. You will not hear from me in July of 2021. This will be the first monthly creator update that I am skipping. It just conflicts too heavily with my move. Sometimes life gets in the way of hobbies. But I am excited to hear from you regarding what you think of the DVC Grand Floridian expansion, if you have any thoughts on Boo Bash in general, but especially on if my partner and I end up going what you would like to see us dress up as, and then in general sort of the ever-changing Disney news and policies and procedures, particularly regarding to COVID-19. And as always, if there are analytics or stats that you would like to see me highlight that I'm not tracking, please let me know and I would be happy to clue you into what my channel looks like on the back end. It's going to be a couple months before we talk casually like this again, but I really genuinely hope that you all are doing well and staying safe and having the most magical day possible. The next time you see a monthly creator update, it will not be this background. I will be living in a new space. But regardless of physically where I am, I am committed to this YouTube channel and we will see you real soon at Pixie Dust PhD.